Hello, everyone. Welcome back to New York Comic Con 2015. Golden Boy on stage, joined by my good friend, the one and only Soma. But we are joined Aww. by two very special guests. I'm very excited for this one because I happen to be a fan of the show. I'm joined by Martin and Olivia Olson, who are the voices of Marceline and Hudson Abadir Hello. from Adventure Time. Hello, Hi, awesome. Doing? Thanks for joining Great. us. Great. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. So, you guys are, you know, you're awesome on the show. Uh, obviously, you know, super successful. Everyone loves Adventure Time. You're going to see some, some Finn cosplay around here somewhere. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I've never seen it before. Me I know either. a bunch of people are going to hate me for it. Then why are you on the stage? <laughs> because right now? I want. Because I love these people. I just met them. They're lovely. <laughs> they are lovely. And I, I want to know about it. So, if, could you guys quickly summarize what Adventure Time is? That would take the entire oh, interview. Oh crap! <laughs> I have one uh, just very briefly. It's an apocalyptic world in a children's show. So it's a mixing of an adult concept with a children's show. <laughs> it's about a boy and his dog, and they go on a lot of adventures. There you meet go. a lot of crazy princesses and wizards and villains and sounds like so my it, cup it, it truly yeah. is a one-of-a-kind <laughs> show it, it's a one-of-a-kind show but the cool part about adventure time is that there's so much lore that is attached to it there's so much uh so much to tell there's a lot of stories to tell and uh one of those in particular is uh this book right here which is the enchiridion uh so now the fun part about this is that while on the front it's the enchiridion on the other side it's Marcy's super secret uh, is scrapbook. That's so uh, cool. So it's actually pretty cool. Alex, that side there, the Enchiridion, is the most powerful, dangerous book in the world. And I'm just <laughs> handling it like a commoner. And, and the other side of it is it's accidentally fused together with a little girl's diary. Yeah. So that's the premise of the book. <laughs> so what I find really cool about this is, uh, and for those of you guys who may not know, uh, Martin wrote the Enchiridion side, but then Olivia wrote the super secret scrapbook side. And that's right. a pretty cool, uh, you know, project to work together. But was there any collaboration between the two of you? Because they are pretty separate, I would imagine, right? We, we had to write like crazy to make the deadline. Yeah, it was absolutely collaborative. I have never taken on such a huge project of writing before. So um, it was very, very helpful to have him to kind of reference. And is this good? Does this sound good? Is this clever? Um, and likewise, just for the parts I was doing, I would run past her. So it was very, very good collaboration. Well, and, and what's also funny is that you are, uh, Olivia, you're a voice actor. Yeah. Um, and Martin, you're a writer. Uh, right. But then going into this, uh, you have now taken on the task of writing. <laughs> and you are now a voice actor. <laughs> I didn't think uh, yeah. of it like that. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you, you've you know, both taken on these, these uh. roles together, so you both kind of learn from each other, which I think is uh, pretty cool, right? So I can die now is what you're saying. Right? <laughs> I mean, Don't you be know, so dark. Yeah, you come know, on. Don't take it <laughs> in that direction. He is the Lord of Evil, the dark one. That is so very he, true. He well, then you're dark. allowed. <laughs> we, ended up, we ended up doing this through the, through the wonderful kindness of, of Pendleton Ward, who created the show. So he had liked Olivia's voice on, an, on a different show, a, a Disney show. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me, he said, you're uh, Olivia's dad. Um, if this show goes, it's called Adventure Time. Yeah. Um, just a heads up, I'd like her to be one of the main characters. And then as the show proceeded, he read my book. I wrote a book called Encyclopedia of Hell, which was written by Satan. It's like a Mark Twain like yeah. a satire. And so then he asked me, he said, what if you play her father, your daughter's father on the show, and you could play Satan, you could play the <laughs> devil, you could play Lord of Evil. Cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I said, Penn, I'm not an actor at all, so forget it. And he said, no, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Just do what I say. So I was so grateful to him. Just do what I say. That's I was so grateful to him because we ended up I then mean, writing these really books. you really have to act for the role, so that was a plus. Yeah, so at any rate, <laughs> that's, that's how it started. It was as simple as that. There weren't, weren't any auditions or anything. So let's say uh, I'm having my birthday, and s I open up a gift, and it's that book, and I've never seen this show before, and I, I start reading it. What kind of knowledge am I going to uh, soak in reading this book? Will I be spun up on the show? Will it help me uh, maybe get into the show and understand what's going on? Totally. Um, Absolutely. Here's one thing I wanted to talk about was the Incaridian is a book of heroes that's in the show. So the challenge was to, how do you make the characters in the show be in the book? So we uh, came up with a joke premise, which is that uh, Lord of Evil needed money. <laughs> so he had screwed up with his evil excesses. So he then <laughs> uh, got his minions, his evil minions, to make an app, which is somewhat like a uh, texting app. 
But for any book that you have, if everyone has the same book, you just talk into the book, and then your avatar comes up, and then you can just talk to each other throughout the whole book. Yeah. So throughout this Wizards and Heroes book, um, All Arceline the characters in the show are kind of commenting on yeah. the different chapters. And oh, wow. So it's really cool. And then her book, which is magically fused to it, it's very embarrassing for her that that was now everybody has the book. <laughs> so Lord of Evil had to cast a spell upon it that you can't open it past that book. Yeah. So pa past the first book. Okay. That's a little that's convoluted, like but that's that. the basic idea. Well, I, I think, you know, what's, what's so fun about Adventure Time is that you can explain that and it makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know what? Yeah, I get that. You know, that, that, that actually connects. You didn't connects. really answer his question question dad about what the books are about that's true but i did <laughs> but i did an important thing which is tie into how it actually fits the series because there's no none of our characters yeah you nailed that yeah. none of our characters are in it <laughs> nailed it for. yeah but uh you, why don't you answer that question all right yeah. so it's the book of heroes and wizards which is the most powerful book in ooh um finn the human who's the main character you know he has it in his backpack, sits on it, doesn't really use it very much. <laughs> it's more of like a placeholder type of thing. Um, but my side is Marceline's personal diary. And so she has a very extensive backstory, especially with Simon Petrikoff, the Ice King. Um, so the book starts the day that he finds her in the apocalyptic world. In the wreckage of, the, of Earth. Yes. So you're going to find out a whole lot of information about both how Simon started going crazy with the ice crown and um, cool. it's wow. really, it's deep. Well, and also another thing <laughs> to point out too, uh, Olivia, is that, you know, the story of Marceline is finally going to be told mm -hmm. uh, in a eight part uh, series. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it comes out in November, I think. November 14th. November 14th. So that, that's actually up. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Right around the corner. Uh, I know you guys had shown like one episode or preview or something yeah. like that uh, here at New York Comic Con. Um, so, you know, when you were writing this, how did uh, how did that influence? You know, knowing that this mini series was coming up, mm -hmm. how did that influence a little bit of the writing in the book? Oh, we like scrapped so many ideas. Um, they had told us that the miniseries was coming out, so Adam Muto and Ken Osborne and Penn were very, very helpful with making sure we had all the information of what the story was going to come out so that we could correspond it to, to fit with what actually happened to her. <laughs> they were amazing. First, Penn had written just, he said, well, how should we handle this? And he wrote a, just a two-page memo to everyone saying, because he was very much behind the book and the Book of Heroes is one of the main do, uh, you know, books in the series. So he said, why don't we just consider it so that we don't have to uh, make mistakes about matching up the series which mm -hmm. we haven't written yet, the miniseries. Mm -hmm. Why don't we consider it perhaps it could be a parallel world book that mm -hmm. straddles dimensions because the multiverse has various versions of each character in it. It's a real trippy series. Yeah. <laughs> but then ultimately cool. Adam Muto uh, was unbelievably helpful and went through the book in its entirety, yeah, he gave twice, and he so gave so many notes of most okay, this doesn't add up. Change this. This is great. Um, yeah, he was so supportive and helpful. It was a, such a collaborative effort, um, but they also gave us a lot of freedom to sort of come up with a lot of the backstory, which I That's think awesome. is awesome. That's fantastic. Writing from yeah. my own character's point of view and getting to sort of make up a little bit of her backstory was. Yeah. It doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, that's fantastic. I know. Well, who can say that? Like, I play really this cool. character, but I also got to, like, figure out who she was for myself and for the rest of the world. So. Plus, awesome. she got to write it with her father, who plays her father on the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what's fantastic Crazy. for Adventure Time fans is knowing how invested you guys are and that when they hear the voices, you know, being portrayed on screen, they know that the people behind it truly do love uh, this world and you it's know these fantastic. characters. fantastic. Yeah, we're both such fans of the show. I mean, I would watch it if I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Yeah, and, and I think that speaks volumes also to what you know Pendleton created. Mm -hmm. um, which the whole thing came out of the fabric yeah. of his mind. He's the uh, most amazing person mm -hmm. that you've well, ever Well, I wanted to ask you guys that. You know, uh, what is it about Adventure Time? Uh, not only do you feel made it a hit, but what makes it so unique as well? And I know that's kind of a loaded question it's a um, very unique uh <laughs> yeah it, it's very unique because typically uh you know and having grown up watching tv shows like uh you know ah real monsters or rocco's modern life or hey arnold there was a yeah there's a lot of uh 
you know, like layers in there, but it wasn't very, uh, you, you couldn't tell. You really had to look at it as you got older, you, you actually looked at it, right? And you saw the layers. Um, Were you a Rocco fan? I was a Rocco fan. You wrote Rocco. So I wrote about half of those. Okay, uh, my life is here. I'm being yeah. floored oh right God. now. I'm, yeah. I'm actually floored right that now. That was like, and that's where I met some of my closest friends, uh, Dan and Swampy and Steve Hillenberg. That's amazing. I loved the big heads. I loved them. <laughs> I thought they were lovely. I'm so Rocky. glad you guys know that show. We <laughs> oh, were very I, proud I of that show. Rocky. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that whole like, part of Nickelodeon's like offerings and, and even, you know, also what Cartoon Network started coming out with afterwards really like just, yeah. was, it was my childhood. Yeah, you know? I think it paved the way for all of these offbeat, quirky, weird And that was cartoons. Joe Murray who created it, who's an astounding crazy thinker he's really an amazing person yeah and, and i think that kind of you know again so going to adventure time here uh you know th those very kind of different tales that are being told um with a very unique twist uh what do you think was the appeal with like the kind of adult theme yeah layered on a children's tv show you're right that's a good description um, of i it. mean i think what makes it so unique and special is that in this world of ooh everything is so magical that anything could happen. Um, <coughs> there's no boundary to the show. Um, so while there's, it's very mystical and sort of out of this world with a lot of um, the plot lines and stuff, there's also real storylines that I think a lot of kids, adults, and everyone can relate to. Um, you said it earlier, it's about a boy and his dog. It's the funniest thing. Yeah. <laughs> that is the ultimate um, Hollywood pairing. <laughs> yeah, it totally <laughs> is.